going forward spiritually. Going forward spiritually. Sound familiar? Ang hindi yung salitang forward, di ba? Sa mati na rin hindi yung? Okay, forward and forward. Alright? But basically, uh, when we talk about the, the word forward, it's not hindi yung mga tras, but rather moving forward, it is showing progress. That we are going somewhere. Basically, I believe this is what God is wanting to uh, uh, emphasize to us that we are to go forward spiritually. And I'd like to uh, uh, open this from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. Okay? Let me go. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of the laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. I think of what it says here. So I think therefore, leading the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. You say that perfection, you know, it's uh, it's, uh, Margin of the Bible, it says maturity. Uh, the Lord is wanting us to uh, go on to maturity. He wants us to become mature people. And mature Christians look like Jesus Christ. Okay? You know, in the Holy Scriptures, that uh, God has given us the gifts. You know, the the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, uh, and prophets. To, to help equip the saints para magawa natin yung gawa natin until we come and grow up into the image of Jesus Christ. Maliwala po ba? He doesn't want us to remain children anymore. And you know, in, in testimony kanina, it's one of the signs of maturing because if, if you're not yet mature, all you, all you care about is your needs, yung gusto mo, kung uh, how it affects you, but when you begin to mature in the Lord, you begin to see the needs of the world. It's not just the needs of yourself individually, it's not just the needs of your family. It's not just the needs of our own personal church. But rather, we begin to see that there are needs out there. And that's one of the reasons, one of the motivating reasons why we get involved in ministry. Because the word ministry is from the word to minister, or the word minister means to serve. Okay? For us, serving is not something that we love and not enjoy. For us, serving is following in the footsteps of Jesus of meeting the needs of the people out there. Okay? In other words, we're glad that God has blessed us. We're glad that we're blessed coming in, we're blessed going out. We're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the country. How many of you believe that? How are you today? Blessed to be blessed. If you uh, if you will focus on that particular confession, the reason we want, we are blessed is so that we can we are not only receivers or recipients of the blessings of God, but we become distributors of the blessings of God. But you want to go Blessing, but rather you become someone who becomes an agent of the blessings of God for others. And, uh, uh, when you walk in the place, you bring the favor of God. When you enter a certain area, you bring the presence of God. When you come into a place of darkness, you bring the light of God. You understand what I'm saying? And you know, you, you begin to think not only of yourself. But also the needs of the Lord out there, the reason why God has blessed you. It's not because we can say, God has blessed all this for but rather that we might be able to bring the blessings of God to others also. To, to introduce them, especially uh, to the one who has given us the blessing. Okay? Now, because I'm leaving behind the elementary principles of, of, of Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean, okay, you want to have to go to the some people say, okay, basic that, hindi niya para sa akin, that advanced up to be on that. No, that's not what it means. Hindi niya sabihin ka, kayo, huwag ka na natin yung faith in Christ. Hindi niya sabihin ka, huwag ka na natin yung 
they are not active. It doesn't mean that Akaliputan uh, uh, is not the teaching of eternal judgment. Some people today think that they have an advanced theology concerning the grace of God. But for them, even if they not receive the eternal judgment, but as they not, they give a God of judgment. We call this the hyper priest movement. Uh, for them, for that repentance, for that, you know, uh, they, they don't need to be afraid whether they're sinning or not because para sa kanila, ito naman yung grace ng Panginoon. And uh, they can always live the way they want to because hindi na sila papapayan ng Panginoon na pumunta na naman sa Diyan. Ang isa mo lang sa inyo? But the problem with that kind of thinking, in time of uh, ignorance, some of the words of Jesus, as sinasabi ng Panginoon, the time will come that many will say to me on that day, it's the day when the Lord comes in judgment. Right now, He is our shepherd. Right now, He is our savior. Right now, He's the one who gives us all the opportunities that we need. Right now, we receive our bounty grace. And I, because of the fact that we have received an abundant grace of God, because Jesus Christ says, to whom much is given, much is required. Because God has given us so much grace and created so much favor, so much opportunities. If we never take advantage of that, and we lose out of the end, we have no one to think. Now we want to go back to this. Okay? Jesus Christ says, in that day, many will come to me and say to me, Lord, have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done miracles in have we not done this and have we not done that? And I, Jesus Christ said this, and I will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. See, just because you can cast out demons in the name of Jesus, does not mean you're evil. Because you're not casting it out based on your own merits. Kaya na naman lumalayas mga demonyo, kinala nila ang pangala ni Christo. You understand what I'm saying? Just because you're able to work out miracles, does not mean you are a good under God. That is more of a gift that God has given to us. And the gift of God will work. When we give a righteous life or not? Are you want to go out? Let's have some. Okay? The anointing was working in his life, even though he was not uh, living righteously. See, the one thing they got me that from the Holy Spirit is uh, Jesus Christ said, We will be known by our fruits, not by our gifts. We will be known by our fruits, not by our anointings. We will be known by our fruit, not by uh, the, the amount of knowledge that we have. And fruit basically here means you result of living in a close relationship with Jesus Christ. It talks more about character. You character Jesus Christ said it this way, if you love me, you will what? Keep or obey my commandments. And so as we obey the commandments of the Lord, we will we're developing a close relationship with him. Maliwala ko ba? And so yung character ni Cristo ay nabibigalap sa akin kasi susunod tayo sa kanya. Maliwala ko ba? How many of you started speaking in tongues when the Spirit of God that ties with the Holy Spirit? How many of you speak in tongues? Okay? Did, did the Holy Spirit require you to study a new language first? No. Hindi yun eh. Wala. Hindi na damat yun eh. That's a gift that God has given you. The anointing to be able to preach and to teach. That's the gift that God has given you. Maliwana ko ba? Okay? So wala kang kinalaman doon. But yung development ng new character, meron kang kinalaman doon. Your character will be developed when you begin to respond to the word of God, when you begin to respond to the commandments of God. Maliwana ko ba? Okay? So we need to understand this. So it comes here sa pinya. It doesn't mean that we will no longer need the doctrines of faith in God. You will always need that. 
We will no longer need the baptisms or the laying on of hands or eternal judgment or the resurrection of the dead. In other words, what he's saying is, you know what, I'm not in foundation yet. And we are to build on top of this foundation. In the it's again, and the dynamic of foundation and build something else. But you want to And that's where we are going on to maturity. We want to uh, uh, have a deeper, closer relationship and walk with the Lord our God. And, the, and, and God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, having that whole scripture, is given by the inspiration of God. So when St. Paul wrote this, I believe it was St. Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, he wrote it not because it sounded good. He wrote it not because, well, uh, based on my thinking. This is not based on thinking on his thinking. He said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. This is what the Holy Spirit uh, uh, inspired him to write. In other words, this is coming from the very heart of God. God desires a family. God wants to have children. But more than that, God wants to have mature sons and daughters in the Lord. Like I said on Sunday, if our goal in life is just to live, you know, get married, have a family, have children, uh, spoil our grandchildren, and just die, uh, retire and die peacefully, having lived a good life, we must have to believe in our own vision and goal. Because God's dream is for you and me and him to rule and to reign forever. You understand what I'm saying? God has shown us from the Holy Scriptures this life that we have today. This is not the life. There is a greater life that we have. And, you know, during, in the early 1980s, 82, 83, we had some testimonies of two people, some people who were taken to heaven, one of them was Robert Spiner, he was taken to heaven when he was eight years old, and he saw things there. Uh, and I think I preached on this. Another one was uh, a guy named Dr. Evie, how he fell from the third or fourth uh, uh, floor railing. Sometimes it's an alien who did that, so he fell down. Uh, he died and he went to heaven, but God sent him back. And God uh, gave him certain things uh, that they had been going on. Uh, he was talking about some of the plans of God. And during that time, I, I had a book, Angels on Assignment by Robert Huck. And God said, uh, this is not a dream, this is not a hallucination. And just to prove to you that you're really here and you're talking to me, I give you 100 predictions that will take place in your uh, life. If one does not take place, don't consider this a good experience. I will not have 100%. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay? Why is it going to not right now, in our day and age, what a dummy dummy tattle? I'm not a bad boy. Or they were taken to heaven, not giving vision to them, some are giving vision to them, and we don't have that either. And every time they come here, they talk to us about God's great plan. One thing is that He is coming back again. Uh, brothers and sisters, we are in the end game. All right, we are in the end time. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus Christ uh, came. I do not believe we have another 1,000 years. Maybe 100. Hopefully, in the 500 years left. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are in the end game. And God is now bringing His church together. Uh, and there are, there are people who are beginning to respond, who are willing to take up what God is wanting them to do, that they might become the church that God wants them to be. Because when Jesus Christ comes back, He's not coming back for a baby church. He's coming back for a church that is mature. A church who looks just like Jesus. But you want to go back. Something I mean, St. Paul, the book of Ephesians, is coming back for a bride without spot, without wrinkle, and without blemish. Looks like it. Okay? Perfected or not, what's the one you see last time? Maturity. Something I'm 
someone who uh, experienced that and came back to life is uh, his name is Kevin Zaka. He's a he's an airline uh, steward. He want, he's always wanted to become a pilot, but he died. And basically, the Lord said to him, "Actually, you can do those things. You can actually stay because you finished what you need to do in life." But they're not only at the science of you. You can consider this a bonus. And uh, for a while, I am in my head. It's not quick. I'm going to leave it for a while. Something that you know, the Lord was eventually able to talk me to it. I'm going to leave it for a while. He's the first person to do my things. I'm going to leave it for a while. I'm going to leave it for a while. But God showed him these are the things that you will need to do. And one of the things that God rewarded him with. Because he mentioned it for by himself. When he died, when he came back, Jesus Christ said to him, I will give you the ability to play eight pieces of music on the earth. So he can play the guitar, he can play the drums, he can play the saxophone, he can play. Uh, for, for some of the musicians, it took you years of practice to make it perfect to play with that. I think he's like, you know, it's not like and he's able to record one uh, piece. He'll play the drums, then he'll record the, play the saxophone, then he'll record the play this, play that, and then he will combine that. It, it sounds like an orchestra. And so, yeah, this is something that God gave him as a reward. But like a lot of people, I don't think that God just gave the ability to play this. But he went to Cuba. And one of his messages is that we are in the end time of Sabina. Many of you are praying for a move of God. We are already in it in Sabina. Okay? And it's going to become stronger and stronger. But in Sabina, the reason why we have that we can get the special events or great miraculous signs. I know some of them are happening here and there. It's because the church has to be equipped and has to be prepared. What you want to do? And preparation does not take place automatically. Kailangan may import tayo sa kanya. What you want to do? Maturing in the Lord does not take place automatically. It will involve effort on our part. Okay, so hindi mo makikita na natin sa ating natin ng isang Lord. Uh, let us go on to perfection or let us go on to maturity. Why would he exhort us, okay, to mature kung mangyayari ito automatically? It requires our obedience. It requires our faith. Okay? And we find uh, things in the Holy Scriptures like 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay? 1 Corinthians. Chapter 14, verse 20, please in Asabirito. Brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in matters be babies, but in understanding be mature. God wants us to mature in our understanding. And this life is not all about us just experiencing the success that the world is looking for. God will give you that. But you should not be swayed by that. You should not be controlled by that. You should not be influenced by that. The only thing that should influence you is God. I want to know about. So he wants us to mature in understanding. In Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, Samarito, he be preached, warning every man and teaching every man. In all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. May God what Saint Paul is doing. Samanya, we are preaching Jesus. We are teaching the principles of Jesus Christ. And the reason we're doing this is not to show them how I'm going to do it. It's not about me. I'm not doing this to show people that I'm not doing it. Okay? I'm doing this so that I might be able to present every believer perfect or mature in Christ Jesus. You cannot separate the Word of God from maturity. As a matter of fact, your attitude towards the Word of God is a good measurement 
of whether you're coming to maturity or not. But what about that? If this is just a burden or sabi sabi na naman yun, it's just a message, you know? Just give us a 10 minute message or a 15 minute. I can do that. We have service where I can do that. Okay? But, sabi nga rito, the Word of God is able to bring us to a point of maturity. You cannot do it without the Word of God. And how many of us can say that we are so much of experts in the Word, we don't need to be here anymore? Maliwala ko ba? Hello? So we need to see this. In 2 Timothy, <coughs> are, you, are you able to follow? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. This is what he says. All scripture, not some, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, mature, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And it's separated from maturity. The less of the word that you have, the, uh, the less uh, the less mature you are. Then let us see you. The more the word you have, and it's not just because the memorize me in foundation verses or you want to memory verses. But the more of the word you have working in your life, that means you are living in life. The more mature you become. Maliwana ko ba? Sabi niya, all scripture is given by inspiration or another translation is by the, it is God breathed. That means the very life of God is in there. See, in the book of Genesis, when God created man, how did they go and fall back from the dust of the ground? He looked like a man, he smelled like a man, but he wasn't alive. There was no animation in him. Okay? It was just a body that was there. And I'm going to give you, and God breathed on him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So the breath of God is the life of God, and every time we hear the word of God, God, I'm not going to give life. Giving force and coming the same thing that animated God. But you want to go back? So we need to understand this church. Uh, we need to see this that this is part of maturing in the Lord our God. Now, like I said, uh, growth isn't going to happen by itself. Growth is not accidental, but it is intentional. Okay? And I'd like for us to look at the servant uh, scripture in 2 Timothy. This word, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Let me go. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not proud unless he competes according to the rules. Is there anyone here who is using an old King James? I'm reading from that. New King James version. Can you say, is that the old King James? Can I read it? I was saying, I used to say, I was saying, I was saying, I uh, and if a man also strive for masteries, okay, if a man would also strive for masteries, uh, it is also translated in most translations like the New King James, if a man competes in athletics. See, you athletics not that we understand it. Basketball, uh, the football, and, you know, tennis, and things like that. And yes, but in the days where Saint Paul lived, you have players who love to make a couple of them. You have the boxers, and for that the guy wants to do that, you know, uh, they have to wear special helmets because they don't have the kind of clothes that we have today. Uh, your head will literally get crushed <laughs> by the hook, and it's not going to be foul. Okay? Then after that you have the rest of it. And then after that you have the back praise. Like, I don't know if I'm, I'm uh, saying it right. You know, you know, in other words, but you see what I am going to talk about saying and then about rest day. You see the back of you know, you know, you know, that these are back praise. Not do that man. Until finally one is standing. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what 
Netflix was banned and can be prevent. And this was a very big thing. Athletes were very honored at that particular time during the, the time of St. Paul. And you will find that they were uh, absolutely sad at this, that you would take many principles from this. In our idea about the thing behind and all that stuff. And basically, that's what we said. Uh, and, and these athletes, they don't just show up. Uh, it says here they were striving for mastery. To master something is to become excellent in something. Okay? It's like uh, someone who has mastered the art of using weapons. He becomes an expert in every kind of weapon. Uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, movies, there's certain uh, kung fu masters, they master certain kinds of weapons. You know, favorite dealer, I see them. They can do things with that that other people can, cannot do. And St. Paul is saying that in our Christian walk, we can choose to be a happy go lucky Christian now. Or we can choose to become a Christian who is serious and wants to overcome and wants to become everything God wants us to be. What do you want to move on? See, when we become a Christian, you know, you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, praise God. Your sins are forgiven. You receive the life of God. Okay? And you understand that if you fall on every now and then, God will, God will, will uh, 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 forgive you if you repent before Him. You know, and if you want to live a life that way, you, know, you don't really get involved in so much things. And just, just get involved in first level Christianity. Okay? You might live and die without having read the entire scripture. Go to heaven and wonder why the others are receiving the rewards and not receiving them. You can be a first level Christian only, and hopefully, you can even not. Because I'm giving that from the Holy Scriptures. The moment you receive Christ, you become a child of God. But just like children who are born in the world, okay, you are not in the now, you grow down there as you want, it takes place. But we like it not, it takes place. And to help us in our growth, they don't want to come on. And we need to be taken care of. But when, when it comes to spiritual growth, you have to make sure that you're part of it, otherwise it's not going to happen. But you want to go on. And you strive for masters. You do not become a master just by sitting down and saying, I wish. I wish I'm an overcome. I wish I have great faith. I wish I can be bold and, and, and uh, do things for others, discuss the gospel. God. I wish, I think you can just sit down and say, I wish, and it's not going to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay? Or you can keep confessing it daily, but not do anything about it. It's not going to happen. Because to strive for masteries means that you exert an effort. If you want to attain something, you must do something. Effort is needed that you might have results. You must exert effort that you might see results. Now, these are uh, you know, we you know, understand that means. There are two kinds of that means. I'm going to give you my amateurs and I'm going to give you my pros, you know, professionals. But they're amateurs. You know, they just play the game just for fun. They have no dream of becoming a champion. It, it doesn't matter if they win, they win. Wow, well, they're like, good. They just play that's the problem. Okay? If you never become an expert in the uh, thing that you're uh, acting out, then what do you know? There are people who are called weekend athletes. They only have to engage in sports. There are weekend basketball players, there are weekend tennis players, there are weekend. And whether they win or not, it doesn't matter. They put that aside now, they just have fun. But you want to go back. Okay? But then there, there are the professionals. The professionals are those who are not just interested in playing, they play to win, they play to master. 
the game that they are involved in. If they want to become excellent in that pagdumaling yung point na meron ng tulang, they will be the last man standing. And they understand that for them to do this, they need to put in the necessary training and preparation. Uh, a professional athlete, okay, uh, is willing to pay the price of the training. And it's not fun. They must be willing to submit to a bodybuilder who will tell them you have to do so much exercise every day. And Jesus is saying that there are days that they don't feel like doing it. And, and you know, in the beginning when you start training, all you feel is hurt. Okay? That's how what training is. I used to be able to train. Uh, when I was part of the uh, uh, track and field clubs, uh, high school. You know, we would sit down and Legs with sandbags with crap up. So, beginning some training, okay, all you feel is hurt. I'm going to have a conversation with you, and you think, if it comes back, this is what I'm looking for. But you must be able to go beyond that, okay? Like, for example, the track and field, you know, that, that I will be happy by the parade. See, the minimum of professional. They make sure they go through the training, the preparation that is necessary so that it will qualify them to compete in the games. I, you know, it's like I can't just show up in Wimbledon and say, so come on, friends, there, so come on, that up. I don't even see what that is. I don't even ramp in more. What are the titles that you have? I just, uh, a weekend player, just want to compete. You're not qualified to compete here. You're an amateur. You have no training. You understand what I'm saying? And if you're good, take out the last of some of the eliminations. The eliminations will show them whether you are fit and prepared and worthy enough to compete with those who are already top level athletes. But you want to go Hello, and, and the Lord is saying us through this, through St. Paul, that we can have the attitude of a uh, happy go back to Christian. Okay, no, we're not going to have any. Or you can have the attitude of a professional where you say, Lord, you died for me that I might have this goal. I will not be happy until I achieve everything that you have achieved for me. You understand what I'm saying? It's not just going to heaven. It's being able to go there and say, Lord, I prepared myself, and one day God will give us the position that we prepared for by His grace and His mercy. Are you getting something from this? And if anyone competes in athletics or in strife or masteries, he's not proud unless he competes according to the rules. It's not just a matter of doing things, but you have to do things according to God's way. Okay? I remember when we were in uh, college, and we had this uh, overnight thing in the Karana Cortes, you know. Alam niyo yung tumata ko ngayon pagdala niyo ko, talaga yung sabuhan ko, tuwan ko para ko ngayon. I found out I was good. I mean, I don't have to sit and sit and sit. So, I have two. I have laser light photos here. So, everyone is giving me that. Oh, I know that they're giving me that. We were the first thing to finish. We got this bottle. Right? I'm going to go to the bottle. I'm going to go to the bottle. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? Rules say, you know rules. We finish first. If we finish first, that is that. So what? Rules are not the rules. The rules is, we start with the wrong one, the top, then we start. If they have a cooker, we need to get 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 a cooker. You understand what I'm saying? So we finish first. 
We burst all our, all our balloons. We did not win a prize. Why? We did not do it for the Philippines. Okay? It's not becoming successful the way the world uh, uh, measures success. It means becoming successful in the eyes of God. We want to move on. It's doing things according to the principles of God Almighty. But not only that, the word uh, compete, uh, according to rules also means you submit yourself with the necessary training or preparation needed to qualify for a serious competition. Uh, in Kagaya uh, Sinai there are certain events you cannot be qualified for if you're not willing to train for it, if you're not willing to uh, do the thing that is needed. And we would find samples saying this also in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26 to 27, sorry to have people. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who gives the air, but I discipline my body, and I bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Okay? In other words, I'm making sure that because I'm preaching, I'm also practicing what I preach. Just because I'm preaching does not make it exemption. Okay? okay? Just because I know more does not make me the example. But I have to also discipline myself. If I fail to obey the word of God, then I myself have to obey the word of God. I can't say to God, God, but we will not accept it. But I also do some sort of work that I'm not going to do. So maybe you can entitle me to a few passes. I'm good. If I teach you, that you need to forgive those who offended me. I also need to be able to forgive those who offended me. Do you want to know what? If I teach you to give your tithes and offerings, I should also be giving my tithes and offerings. If I teach you to have faith in God, I also should have faith in God. If I teach you to endure and bear up to the pressure, I also should be able to do that. This uniform does not make me any special in the sense that, except that the whole thing, but you guys have to do it. As a matter of fact, when this uniform is only a style of gorgeous, more is required. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hello? And St. Paul is saying that. I have to abide by the principles of God. Otherwise, I may have preached to others, I might have helped others, but I myself would be disqualified. See, that was the profession happening at that point in time. See, they would go there, they would pray. And, uh, you know, it would take a long time, there would be hurts, and there's somebody who uh, put oil on there, and things like that. And when they're ready, somebody said, like, okay, now you were ready to compete in the games. Okay? Same thing in our Christian life. We, we, we want the greater anointing. Are you prepared for it? We want the mantles that God is giving today. Are you ready? We want to be participants in this book that God is doing today. Are you allowing the Spirit of God to train you? You understand what I'm saying? So we don't have to do that in the Bible. We need to prepare for those things that God has given us. And usually it's, it's, it's connected to us abiding by His Word. See, it's not just a matter of, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about today. And I've heard people say that. The first time I read the teaching, Ginawa Kunayan. And that's what troubles me. When you use the word Ginawa and you did it in the past. So now my question is, okay, Ginawa, are you still doing it? When I heard about the quiet of Ginawa Kunayan, yeah, I know, you did it. Are you still doing your quiet after that? When I heard the teaching about meditation of the word of God, Ginawa Kunayan, yes, I heard it. Heard you, you've done it. Are you still doing it today? When I hear the confession of God, the, the teaching of confession of the Word of God, you know what I'm doing? Yes. Thank God, you know what? Are you still doing it? See, it's not just a matter of starting. You must continue. Let me want to know that. It's not just starting and continuing and quitting and saying, well, but I'm not going to go up. No. In starting, continuing, and finishing. 
Give us a happy feast of those who finish the race will be saved. Not those who start the quest. Really love God while they were doing it, but then to quit. We are in the end game. This is not the time to become lazy in the things of God. This is not the time to say, okay, because we're not, no, this is the time to really press on. That's what, the, that's what we've learned also from the picture of the God has a plan for us. You are God. God is dreaming of a family who will walk the earth doing the things that Jesus Christ did. That's his dream. And, he, and he's trying to say to us, that's maturity. Don't you stop God's name? Okay? So it's not just it's not just starting. It's not just looking good and uh, very good at the beginning, but it is finishing. A mature person is a finished person. In other words, a developed I think that will be developed. As first, first Timothy, I think I said that Timothy. First Timothy you know, chapter 4, verse 7. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, 7, 8, but reject profane and old wise fables, and exercise yourself towards godliness. There you go, exercise yourself towards godliness. Now, we understand the word exercise, right? Right? Then yeah, we understand what exercise that means to exert this is an effort, you know. For, for healthy reasons, but it means it means more than that. The Greek word again it is connected to the world that Saint Paul Saint Paul was living in at that time. Like I said, you must select the least of all. One of them is the athletes. Okay, but the last the inner tower as about athletes. Athletes consider it uh, an honor to be able to uh, be able to do what they're doing, even if it means they get crippled in the process. Because in the final game, there could be broken bones, broken backs. Okay, but to them it is valuable to think of as long as they achieve. Uh, you told me that sometimes say, "Well, you have to make a reef." And there's a perishable reef after about two or three months of that. But aside from the same, we are looking for an imperishable, an eternal one. God is showing us there is more to life than just living properly. There is more to life than just achieving your dreams. There is more to life than just doing this and doing this. Jesus Christ says that this is eternal life, Father, to know you and your son, Jesus. To get to know that, na ang pinipig ng puso nila, gano'n din ang pinipig ng puso nila. Your heart beats in synchronization with God's heart. But you're not just looking at the ends of the earth for now. But you're looking beyond us to what our Father has said there for us. And you are willing to do what it needs to be done. And the word here, some of you exercise yourself in the Greek, connected to that time, means this to strip yourself naked in order to move without restriction. See, during that particular time, when men would come to the gymnasium to train, they take off every piece of clothing. They are completely naked. And the reason why they do that is they don't want anything to hinder their movements. But they want to go Now, for us, it might be a little scandalous. But, you know, if some, you know, we've been to Rome, we've been to uh, certain parts of Europe, there are statues there of naked men. Because that was the time that they lived in at that time. Okay, they exercised, they, they wrestled, they did. So you know, what happened to something that I don't want to do? Because I, if I had a shirt, 
that ship can be used against you. So, see, what happens to an athlete at that time? They, they will train. And if they fulfill the requirement of being able to train with the satisfaction of the trainer, with the satisfaction of the bodybuilder, with the satisfaction of those who are examining them, okay, they pick up a couple of games, one of the things that they do, they will decide so that your know, analysis level will become very viable. And then there's a point that oil will be applied throughout all their bodies. And you just lay out. The reason they want that is so that if they compete in the game, they have oil in themselves. You become very slippery that if someone holds you in a choke or in a body lock, they cannot maintain that. That's what they're Okay? So that is what they want. And this is a picture of the Christian That's 
matter whether you're young or you're young, something I'm saying, oh, don't let them look down on your youth. When you're old, something I'm holy scriptures and the same old things. You see, years old. I'm starting the first phase of this ministry. And he, when he first introduced himself to the Egyptian, uh, to, the, to the people under Egypt, the Israelites, they want, they, they, they say, oh, they're the Savior. So they delivered that the command of Moses uh, with the Pharaoh rather. And this was the Pharaoh. I get out of the black and I'm in the black. It's like a new one. But even think about it. They have too much leisure now, so let's make their lives harder. So now they want to stone Moses. Well, he's having to worry about the master class of the new one. And he's like, oh, I'm going to be here. You think that was very encouraging for Moses? For a man who's 80 years old, it's not. We make excuses for old age. Staying in power, man. Staying in power, man. What big fight. Moses was in there. What gave him the fire? What gave him the fight? What gave him the motivation? Was that he went to that place. No longer in the Old Testament, we are in the New Testament. The blood of Jesus is over the place for us. We can go to God and see Him face to face. So I think you see on the back. When you're in your room, where your father is waiting for you, how many fathers do you take advantage of? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. We need to mature, but it's not going to happen on the right hand. It's not going to happen accidentally. We have to say, Lord, yes, I'll do what needs to be done so that I can become what you want me to do. See, sometimes the confrontation, if you get excited, much more this standing for the Not back to normal, but rather, let's do what needs to be done so that the next marching order is given to us at that point. I'm going to go back, strip away those things that are pulling you back. What is your excuse why you can't become what God wants you to be? Maybe it's time to give up that excuse. Is that what it means? It's an abnegable exercise. It is to strip yourself from these things that will be saved. Then you can have this person. We can become Christians in the way that we will become. Amen. How many of you are excited? It's all sad. Let's pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we just want to thank and praise you that you have great plans for us. Help us, O Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit to capture this vision so that we might be able to flow with you this great plan. Help us to see there's more to life than this event that you have to be back for us that will last throughout eternity. And it's greater, bigger, much more noble. Help us accept that which we have for us. And do the best for you. We might be able to help you. We praise you.